Hi, come on in. Probably my favorite room for me in the museum is the, what we call the 50s room, which actually goes, much of the things go back before the 50s, but we have furnishings in here that you associate with the years in the 1950s years. Hanging on the wall here is a picture, it's an artist's conception of Frederick Post, the founder of our town. Uh, we're told that he was between 30 and 40 years old in this picture. He looks much older than that, but you figure back in those days, men aged much earlier in life than they do today. Today's, today's 60s or yesterday's 30s, I guess. This uh, picture is, we, he, the man seemed to be uh, photo shy. And I think also being out in this area, there were not a whole lot of cameras in this area in the early years. And so we feel that we've been deprived because we don't have as many pictures of Frederick Post as we would like to, especially since he was our town founder. Next to that picture, we have over here something that anybody who lived through the 50s would remember. It was called a mangle. And this was for ironing clothes back in the day when there was no such thing as drip dry or permanent press. Anything that got wet wrinkled. And the only way that you got it uh, straightened out or smoothed out was to iron it. And this became a real chore when you were ironing bedding or uh, putting creases in pant legs or anything that, that had a large area to be ironed. The mangle was really great because you could lay it through, uh, lay the arctic through there and pull it through and iron large portions of, of the area at a time. I always wondered why they called something that made something smooth, like, like clothing, a mangle. And I had to Google to find out that actually it was because in England, the, uh, the rigors on a washing machine are called a mangle, and this uh, looks like a, a ringer out of a washing machine. So it got the name mangle because it looked like a ringer. <laughs> Well, next we're going to talk a little bit about this stove because I think I grew up in a house where we had a wood ki kitchen range, except I've been fortunate we always had water piped into the kitchen. I've lived several places where we didn't have a bathroom and we had to use an outhouse, but we always, in every place I ever lived in my life, we had a kitchen sink. Well, this was for a house that didn't have water piped into the house yet. It had a tank on one end of the stove that you filled up with water to have your hot water and you would dip it out with a dipper to, to use wherever you needed hot water. The ovens up above were what we would call a warming oven today. There was no fire up there. They relied on the heat coming from here to keep things warm. And I think quite often women, when they were making bread, would put their dough in the, uh, up here and there, there was enough heat up here to, to get the yeast to rise the bread. We also have uh, right above it, we have the, the little uh, toaster. I had this kind of toaster right up until I was in, in high school, probably a senior before we got our first pop-up toaster. And that would have been in, in 1957 when we got our first pop-up toaster. And my, all I can think of is that, that uh, it was so amazing that we could, we could put our bread in there and walk away from it. This one you had to sit and watch to make sure your bread didn't catch on fire. Next to it, we have the ice box. One of the houses I lived in as a little kid, very, very small, but we had an ice box. And you'd put the ice up in the top, and that, as it would cool, would, would cool down the stuff in the bottom. Of course, milk and stuff still only lasted several, a few days, because in those days, the milk was raw, and raw milk doesn't hang on as long as pasteurized and homogenized milk do. So the, you couldn't keep it in there for a week at a time. Milk would last down there maybe maybe three days, and then it would start to get a little bit strong on you. We also had the, the, the ones that we had had a little drawer in the bottom that you would empty twice a day. for As the ice melted up here, it went down a pipe and would drain in the bottom. This one has no drain uh, 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 tray to pull out, and so I found out that you had to drill a hole in the bottom of your floor and let the water drain underneath the house, which I think probably became a problem later on as that moisture collected underneath the house. This old radio is one that was very similar to one we had when I was a child. And uh, 
I had a lot of fun uh, here just a few years ago. I had a couple from, it was either Maryland or Maine who came through here and I was trying to impress their little girls and I told them that when I was a little boy, my brothers and I used to sit in front of a radio like this and listen to, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. Now, as many of you probably remember, if you're old enough, the shadow's alter ego was Lamont Cranston. And uh, while I was talking to the little girls, their dad got this funny smile on his face and he took out his billfold and opened up. And as I told the girls about the shadow, he showed me his driver's license and his name was Lamont Cranston, which kind of blew me out of my mind. <laughs> I just, but we did the, the our, our uh, radio was actually a film called this one is, uh, it's called Spectrum. No, Spartan, Spartan. But uh, I miss the old good old shows in the old days of Fibber McGee and Molly. And my favorite was the Judy Canova show, which those things are just memories of the past. So that's uh, basically while I'm, while I'm here, I will tell you about uh, we have a little photograph here that's a a uh, 45 RPM photograph. I always get a big kick out of the kids because they want to know want to know if that's a CD. And it's actually a 45 RPM. And I say, no, CDs don't have that big a hole in the middle of them. So. From Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show, brought to you each week by the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company, makers of Palmolive Soap and Colgate Tooth Powder. <laughs> Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet present the Judy Canova Show with Mel Blank, Ruby Dandridge, Verna Felton, Joe Kearns, the Sportsman, Opie Cates and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> Almost up breaking my heart. I'm beside him. Oh, mercy, let his conscience got him. Mom, he wants to marry me. Be my honey, be. What do you think of that? Every minute he gets bolder. Now he's leaning on my shoulder. Mom, 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 mom he's kissing me. Who knows what?
blood evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. The shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the shadow, never seen, only heard, as haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost, as inevitable as a guilty conscience. The Shadow's true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, Death from the Deep. Look at the water, Captain. Calm as a mill pond. I tell you, I don't like it. Now, now, Mr. McLennan, that's not good talk for a first mate. You sound like a superstitious deck swabber. If the elements feel kindly taught us, let them be. I know, Captain. But five days with the sea as smooth as a skating rink is a bad omen. Well, Mr. McLennan, perhaps we'll have a good score tomorrow to restore your peace of mind. For myself, I'll take anything. What's that? Sounded like the engine room. That was more than a boiler, my friend. Hello. Hello down there. I don't answer. Hello. Captain. Captain. We've been... Hello down there. We've been what? Captain Jones. Look, look there. Look at that white path on the water coming toward us. It's a torpedo. We're not at war. Hold fast, Captain. It's going to hit a midship. 